All right, all right, all right. Right back at it again. You already know. Transparent Fox HP out here finishing the bumper, guys. Um, going to try to finish this up um, and get these parts done so that we can start on the flares that we're going to need to do here eventually we need to finish the bottom of a hood that's laying over here off to the side of the camera that you guys can't see um which isn't bad we just got to prime the bottom but as far as today goes what we're going to do to start this off as you guys know on part three i think we sanded this with uh 400 right remember that used piece of sandpaper we had on the uh, da we're going to go ahead and rock that same piece of sandpaper. Man, I forgot to turn the DA on, or the, the damn uh, compressor on, guys. Shit. This might take an extra five seconds now. Either way, let me grab this. Uh... What I did notice, and you guys probably can't see on the camera, I wanted to try to zoom it earlier. There's a few... Um... Where are they? Oh, right here. It's like a little rock chip. And there was something else right right here. I could put some combi in there. It's white. You're not going to see it. But um, just for teaching you guys something, um, we're going to put some combi in it. Right there, kind of. You just kind of... All right. Before I scuff the inside of this a little bit, I want to show you guys this. Try to get in here a little better. So, if you guys can see this, um, 
these little darker spots right here those are like little imperfections that are in the primer remember i was saying that you'll have like you know if we don't if you don't sand it very well or something or feather it you'll get rock chips and stuff or you'll leave stuff if you, you just don't watch out so there's just a little bit of cracking right here so this is what we're gonna do let me find i should have grabbed all this and got ready like i did last time guys and i didn't and what sucks is we're we also do a little bit of mobile paint and body so we're in and out all the time of the vehicle and uh in the garage so but that's no problem okay so what this is this is a speed sector fine putty it's a we call it combi what it does is it's kind of like a bondo in a way um but it dries a lot faster uh it fills in just little little pinholes and stuff what you'll want to do is you just want to wipe a thin coat you don't want to put a big coat on there or glob a, a bunch you just kind of want to put a thick on on the rock chip and i already know from doing this um plenty of times before that the rock chip isn't ever really going to fill in um we could put it a little thicker right and try to do it like that but the problem with leaving it thicker like this is it's gonna it's gonna be harder to sand one and then later on it could cause a ring and you'll see that swell from this uh from this putty so we're just gonna kind of we'll leave it on the hole a little bit we'll try to take a little off on the sides Let's just leave that sit so you're gonna leave that sit probably I would say about 10 minutes the the thinner the the spread obviously the faster it's gonna dry um, and the thicker it is you know it's gonna take a little longer let me clean this little uh, thing off real quick so well that's drying right there I should have honestly I should have took a scuff pad and just scuffed the insides just to make sure that this kind of bites to it a little better but it's all right. It's not going to matter. So what we'll do is we'll probably just move to this piece real quick. While that piece is um, sitting there, just kind of that stuff dries for, like I said, 10 minutes or so. We will take that 400, right, that we had last time. that used piece from part three, remember? We're not gonna get crazy on it. We don't wanna sand a lot. We just wanna sand kind of what's here. So right now we're just kind of sanding out that, that orange pill, I guess, or that texture, whatever you feel like you wanna call it. Right, nothing crazy, that's good enough. We'll go down here. Now on the curves, as you can see, I don't do the same technique as where it was like this. You see how I'm kind of like doing a little different kind of style of sanding? Right there, I want to go with the curve more. I definitely want to go with it instead of trying to cut it as much. I'll hit it right here just a little bit. And then there's a little up here that you guys probably can't see. We're just going to kind of do same way. Kind of crisscrossing it. More sanding the bottom side of this. And then I'm going to, with this, it kind of sucks. Let me loosen this. Drop that down a little bit. Now we're going back up, kind of cutting the top in a way, crisscrossing it. Right, straight, good. Same with here, we're gonna sand the kind of the bottom part of it. Kind of crossing one way, now we're coming back, crossing the second way. Right, now we're using the top, we're sanding the top, crisscross, coming back, crisscross. 
right? A little straight. It looks all right. There's a little orange peel right there, and there's a little just now where where the um, where it rolls over. Just go ahead and hit that just a tad bit. Okay. So now that that's done, that I guess be, what's good. Okay, and this is another thing. This is what's good about the Velcro, right? Because we can take this piece of paper off and not really have a problem. If we want to use this for the bumper that we just have over here, then we can actually, you know, just Velcro it back on and use it. So since we're waiting for that to dry, we, we used 400 just now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just um, a sheet of 600 and we're going to 600 where we just hit all the 400 and kind of work out a little bit. And then I'll show you what, what we do after that. So right now we have these uh, these little 600s. I don't I don't really like to use. I, I like these, but they kind of uh, they're pretty aggressive, to be honest with you. So we're just gonna go back over those same areas, kinda in the same kind of fashion. A little out further though. Same thing here. this right here So have a little on the edges we need to sand here, but the rest of it feels good. If we want, we can go ahead and sand the bottom. Because we know we're going to put paint down here anyway. So might as well just kind of sand this. Um, we're going to put paint through here probably anyway, since we're going to clear it over there. So we go ahead and sand this with some 600. Nothing too crazy, just kind of clean it up. Do the same in here. Just kind of hitting all the flat spots real quick. All right, perfect. So, after we hit that with some 600, right? We're gonna come back. We're gonna finish this with some 800. You could go back over the 600 areas. Um, personally, because we're doing white, we prepped it this certain way. We could, a lot of people would say you could, you could easily just paint over that 600 with the white, have no problem. White is very nice because it's a solid color. You just don't see those sand scratches like you would in any other color. So what we're going to do, right, we're going to just go up here more where that top piece was, right? Because we know that we're going to chop the bumper here with the clear. He doesn't want to just, you know what I mean? He just kind of wants to spot it in, kind of get it ready. Um, and for the video, it's just going to be faster to do it like this. Although for me, it's going to take a little bit more. So as you can see, we're going to take the 800 a little further than we took the 600. We're just trying to get that nice, that nice sanded look where you can tell it's been done. We're going to work our way back. Hit the side a little bit here, work our way back. Oh, okay. Just keep working your way back to where you started. Now that we've done that, 
We're going to take our crappy red scuff pad. I hate these scuff pads. I said that last time. And I'm going to show you the difference, actually, while I'm sitting here complaining about it. And people are like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? Let's just show you really quick. And I don't have any, uh, I don't have any of the ones that I, I kind of like. So there's a couple differences. As you can see, you get these ones that come in a box uh, like this. And then you can get these ones that usually come in another section. This is only half of it. But the other section is a little longer. Um, they go out faster. As you can see, it's a little more see-through. Um, they go out faster than these ones. But um, I personally still like these ones. I don't know why. I just feel like they scuff better than, than these. Like these kind of, I don't know. They just, they piss me off. Last time I scuffed a bumper with these and I think a toy car, they both wanted to peel. And um, and I had put, you know, adhesion promoter and different things. So, I just, I don't know, man. Something about it has kind of pissed me off after that. So, being that it is white, we can hit it with a red scuff pad. Um, if this was a silver bumper, we would be scuffing it right now with a, uh, with a gray scuff pad. And the reason being is the gray scuff pad is less aggressive as far as the scratches. So a lot of people will say this red scuff pad right here is equivalent to a um, like a 400 or a 600 grit sandpaper. So technically, if we just hit that with 800, right, sandpaper, and we're going back over it with this, we're technically just putting more scratches into it. You want to look at it that way you're just putting 400 scratches back into it or 600 scratches depending on how new the scuff pad is apparently you know obviously but try not to touch the piece so much what we're doing right now is we're just scuffing off the top scuff in here scuff in this scuff right here Crevices matter more than anything else. All right. With that, we're all right. Now, what I will do, though, is because we're going to blend it, right, we're not going to paint the whole bumper. What I'm gonna do is, as you can see, we just sanded that with uh, scuffed it. I mean, with the red scuff pad, right? So I'm gonna use a gray scuff pad, and I'm just gonna come back. As you can see, I stopped right here, pretty much. I'm just gonna go a little further with the gray scuff pad. The reason being is when we go to blend this, it's a lot easier to buff a gray scuff pad mark, right? or even a wet sanded of like some thousand grit out, then it's gonna be to do that um, that red scotch bright. Because once again, it goes back to, like I said, the red scuff pad is a lot more coarse. So therefore, it's gonna leave deeper scratches. Looks like it needs to be sanded right there more here. I like to, that's why I hate these scuff pads, these red ones. Just kind of sand it a little bit more real quick right here. All right, perfect. Except for right here, I see a little shininess too. Hold on. All right, perfect. Now that we did that, let's go ahead and just blow it off real quick. Make sure that it's kind of clean. pretty loud I forgot to mute that guys my bad so I mean we haven't ate anything anyway today so I don't think our hands are too greasy just kind of feel it obviously everything feels pretty smooth 
we don't feel any like real you know what I mean like nasty spots everything smooth that's what you're looking for good perfect all right so now what we're gonna do guys we're gonna move to the bumper over here kind of explain a few things on the bumper so remember we put these uh, pieces of combi on here right spots of combi I guess what we're gonna do and a lot of people would suggest um, because it is better to do it probably there's a little 400 right here and where he is there's a block right here So I have a little 400 from uh, the DA that we were using earlier, um, or a while ago actually. I'm just going to block these areas a little bit, right? And the reason being is just so when we DA them, it doesn't create that um, that that bubble that I was talking about. Remember when I told you if you put a lot of um, a lot of this stuff on there. It'll kind of, uh, it'll swell the primer. It's the same thing, same concept here. So it'll, it'll kind of want to swell that sometimes. It's always good to block your primer, but uh, I mean, these are bumpers. So I kind of feel like there's no point of getting too crazy with them because you're not going to see, you're not going to see a lot. You know, we're not charging our buddy an extremely amount either to do these. We're just kind of doing them. So it's not like we got to get too nuts with them. You know what I mean? Plus, we already sanded it all the way to bare metal and did all the stuff that we needed. So as long as you keep this DA pretty flat, right, you're going to cut out and do what you need to do almost. It's not perfect. Like, I mean, if you were working on like an old Chevelle or something, you know, yeah, you want to block it, man. That thing's been through a lot of stuff. But a bumper like this, we know there's not any work on there. There's no body work. You know what I mean? It's just a couple layers of paint. Nothing to be worried about. We're just kind of cutting that uh, orange peel out like we were doing earlier on that bumper. And as you can see, we're kind of just, we're just, you know, working in a line, man. Like mowing your yard, pretty much, man. Now we're going to crisscross it. Right? And instead of going over the curve, I'm still gonna go back and do it like this again. Using the other half of the DA kinda now. Take the DA off the top a little bit right here. We'll just kind of all right. So as you can see, we didn't really hit right here. Still needs to be sanded in here, a little right here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go by hand. We're just gonna kind of crisscross the same way I guess run it down the kind of line of it there's kind of we're once again sanding that orange pill out of that primer on top of making sure everything's been uh, properly sanded feathered Same up here.
top where I know I didn't sand it. Now inside here. That's been sanded with 400. So now, once again, I'm going to go back with a little bit of 600. Once again, we're mowing the yard, man. That's all we're doing here. Just trying to get that nice crisscross in there. You don't want to break through, you know what I mean? So you don't want to be too crazy on it, but. Once again, we'll go by hand in those areas that we felt like we didn't get in very well. After the 600, once again, just like we did before, boys, we're going to take that 800. Right? We'll go back over where that 600 was, kind of. And this will kind of go in the center. We're going to probably go about right here. earlier that we want to kind of blend this midway the only reason I say that is because um, when I was looking at it there's a uh, see if I can move you guys up here a little bit there's some bolts as you can see right here yeah right here so uh, when I buff it when we do paint this and we buff it, I'll explain it a little bit more, but I'll just kind of explain it right now because this is the reason why I'm prepping it the way I'm prepping it. When I buff it, right, you want the buffer to cut with the way you're trying to blend into the new panel, right? So if we're painting all this fresh and we're blending in that way, the buffing pad is going to have to run and cut this way. So when we buff it, the wheel's moving. So instead of buffing it like that right here and cutting that clear that we just put on there back, we want to sharpen it like a knife. We want to buff it in there. We want to blend it, basically. So that's the reason of why I did it like this, because if I tried to buff it right here, I will never, I'll never get a buffer in properly right here. But if I stand on this side, right, and I'm buffing it, and the wheel's turning this way, what's it doing? It's, it's, it's cutting that clear like a knife it's sharpening it so therefore it's going to hide it in a lot better so it's easier for me to sit here and buff it like this 
right and buff the top and the bottom and actually cut it than it would be if I was trying to buff it right here. You're, you're just going to see the blend line more. I could take that off, I guess, but it was just something that I seen on top of the fact that there's still clear that's, that's peeled right here where they've cleared it, they painted it white and they cleared it. So we just want to go past that chip clear, kind of burn it in. You know what I mean? Because we're not trying to go too crazy on fixing this. Because if we have, to, if we fix this, then this whole bumper really needs to get primed like this, and it needs to be taken care of. And that for this piece and that that top piece, I would probably charge. I would charge somebody two hundred bucks just to paint one of these, right? If it was chrome. So if I had to refix this shit. I mean, I'm going to charge you more than 200 bucks. So you're talking probably $300 to paint just this piece, you know, paint, labor and all. But as you can see, I mean, it's it's you're, when you get it back, though, fixed after the 300, it's going to look good. You know, no rock chips, no nothing, but it takes a lot to get those bumpers right. We're just kind of scuffing in here, just scuffing around. We'll go ahead and scuff the primed areas just to make sure that any area we didn't sand by hand or whatever earlier we didn't scuff out properly or whatever the hell. At least hopefully we catch it right now. That means the paint's going to stick a lot better. The bottom right here needs to be scuffed a little bit. You can tell that they painted the, the pieces on this bumper. They painted them on the truck, like the bottom pad or something. Okay, and then once again, remember guys, we're not going to put this red scuff pad all the way to the end. We're going to kind of scuff right here, and then we're going to grab that gray, which is right here. And we're going to finish, you know, about another three, four inches past that red scuff pad. You could go lower, you know, just about an inch or so. Just depends on really the painter. If the painter feels comfortable, we just kind of go extra big on the blends right now just to uh just to kind of get it away from where they're gonna look they're never gonna really look here as much you know what i mean they're gonna look in this area probably but if we don't have the blend here and it's way over here good deal for me i feel like they'll just like it even better you know what i mean all right so now that that piece is done blow it off And if you're already to the point now, like us, we have our bumper done. It's the only other only piece we're painting and the, the top pad. So in this case, if you're somebody like me in a, in a little environment, this would be the best time if you're blowing these pieces off, go ahead, blow your shop out, clean everything off the floor because we, in our spot right now, we're ready to paint. You could quite literally blow these off, clean them with some cleaner, and a rag and start painting and that's what we're actually about to do but what i am probably going to do is uh put it on mute blow the stream out like i said real good for a second or <laughs> blow the stream out blow this uh little little uh, garage part out and i'll show you guys how to finish this up
All right, so now that we blew that off, right? Let's go ahead. Let's um. Let's add a little bit more lighting. Yeah. Let's add just a little bit more lighting to the to the mix, so we could see a little better. All right. So, just because I moved everything around now, what I am gonna do is real quick just blow everything back off. I'll turn the blower down just a little bit. All the crevices under it, around it, inside of it, anywhere. Blow, blow everything you can find. The inside off, right here, everything. The damn sand that you got, right? Even the damn dust off of these. Spell. Now that we've blown everything off, this is what we're going to do. And I'll show you guys with some of this, actually. Just because. A little prep all is what we have. We have a little bit left. Spray it on there wet. Coat it. Coat everything. You could put it on the rag or whatever, but just, just put it on the damn, on the damn bumper. Coat the bumper up real good. Clean it with a clean side of a rag, obviously, right? And then, after you feel like, like me, I went, I don't know, a good little foot. I feel like this rag's probably dirty on that side, right? You get a little bit of dirt, flip it. Go to the back side where your hand just was, right? Clean it off. Now, now that feels like I probably have a little bit cleaner of a piece if you want to make sure that you don't have any uh, debris on there or the liquid from the stuff right because we wetted it pretty good go ahead and get a blower have that same side we had kind of blow it off real gently turn it up a little bit here so let me get out the way of the camera this side same thing oh shit about put some fucking bulldog on I knew something felt good I was like man the weight of this can I was like how the hell did I go from no no prep all to a bunch of prep all same thing guys just gonna kind of wet it like I said you could put it on the rag I've just I've noticed to do this it's just kind of better man sometimes putting it on the rag and then trying to do that is bad so what I've done, right, is I had the rag just like this earlier, folded. I had two insides still because I had it folded. So I'm going to fold it out and fold it to this side, which is still clean. If I had um, if I had just towels right now, right, like a lot of us painters are probably using, I probably would use about at least two or four towels, one towel on each, um, on each piece just to make sure that you don't contain and right there as you can see I already feel like I've wiped the whole bumper now so I'm gonna come back on the clean side I have at least on the back side and kind of finish cleaning it up wiping in here I see there's a little debris around there Nothing too crazy 
And then I'm going to grab my blower, which is in my pocket. And we're going to do the same thing, just kind of blow off any other residue like in here that could be stuck. done all that you're pretty much ready to mix your paint and shoot it that's it man if you needed a job prepping somewhere that's that's the basics that you would need to prep a car they might freak out on a little bit of rock chips but there you go fix it with some more combi whatever we're not getting too crazy with this one so what I am gonna do though I'm gonna go over here off the camera I'm gonna grab me a, uh, a viner Where is my small liners? I know I got some. Need almost buy some more, man. Uh-oh. Need to quit buying so many damn Pokemon cards, guys. Okay, so we've got our liners here. Let's get our paint for this, which is where the hell is our paint for this? Um I know I bought some and I I don't know if it's I think it's still in my truck actually. Hold on. Let me go grab it out of my truck real quick, guys. I don't want to see that's where it's at. In fact, I know that's where it's at. Let's see. What is up, Mama Kitty? Yep, here it is. Hotter than a business. This paint's hot, man. Jesus. This paint's warm, warm. Nice. I'd never think that it would be that hot. I think my garage stays cooler than this. For sure I know my garage stays cooler than what this is sitting in. Okay, so. Let me see what we got here. I think this is nascent, so it's one to one. Two to one, I guess, is what I should say. I don't think we need a lot. All right, let's see. See how well this works. See how well this works. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, dude. Really, though, it's just this base, man. I've been a little confused. I've, I've done this base one-to-one. -one. I've done this base uh, two-to-one before. I think right now it's actually a two-to-one. But I went a little over two-to-one. People are probably like, what do you mean two to one, man? On the on the mixing ratios, whenever you mix your paints. When you have it in a cup, like uh, the cup I'm about to show you guys here in a second. Um, you, uh, oh man, I didn't use it. You have these uh, ratios on the side of the cup that say like four to one, uh, whatever, one to one. And they, um, they're for certain paints. So if you're pouring it in a, uh, where the fuck is my, where the hell is my water, dude? I got my paint gun somewhere. Wait, where's my paint gun at? Oh, I know where it's at. It's over. That's right. Hold on. Hold on. I had to put it in here the other day in the compressor room. I was wondering too earlier. I was like, where the hell is my cleaner at? No, uh, it's in the compressor room. Okay, so... Hopefully this gun's clean, I just didn't even clean it. It's whatever. 
What I mean by the ratios, if you guys can see on these cut on this cup, there's a bunch of um, there's a bunch of different measurements. One, one, one. You know, so depending on your top, which is up here, it says four to one, three to one, two to one. So you'll mix, you know, right here to your one, and then you'll know two one to one. So it's two parts of that, one part, you know, once you make it up to the next one, so on and so forth. So it's kind of really. I need to go turn my um, my air dryer on. Really, I mean it's still going through my dryer system, I guess, but my dryer system's not on. Can we turn the dryer system on? So another little secret, I guess, too, if you want, like, solvent paint to dry faster, you could hit it with some air at an angle, right? Not forward, just hit it at an angle. Reason being, people say the paint will, at an angle, it'll cut through the material and dry it. Instead of doing it like this and just drying just the top layer, if you hit it like this more, you're bound to actually dry it kind of from underneath, I guess, in a sense. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I've just had somebody tell me that. It's, it's better to always dry your panel from the side like this than trying to dry it dead on like this and saying, oh yeah, let's dry our panel. No, just from the side. We know the bottom doesn't matter so much anyway, so if it solvent pops, I guess, from the top, from the air, that's what I would assume is why he was telling me that. If you put a lot of air on, on, this, wet, on this wet base, you're gonna cap off the bottom half that's still wet, and that that being said, it that bottom half is gonna have to come through somewhere, and it's not gonna go through the metal. It's gonna come through that that paint that's dried up, kind of. So you're gonna get probably some kind of like, you know, dye back of some sort in there. I feel like putting a little bit more white in this base, but it laid down real nice.
as much as I want to put some more white in here just to make it like a little more coverage, I kind of don't because that base laid out so nicely, man. It's like, this looks good. Right here, it looked like it wasn't a wrinkle though, almost. Probably because we did have a lot of material in here. A lot of uh, producer. I feel like putting one more coat just because just because man I don't want it to to blush back to the um, what white's a bitch sometimes man it'll want to it'll want to die back on you that first coat was was kind of being a pain but that second coat looks pretty good but being in the lighting that we're in and not being in a perfect booth with 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 perfect white walls right the reason why you want those white walls it just it adds to that that white that whiteness of the light, man. But that's looking all right. I might just add a little bit more, let that dry, put one more coat, uh, just to be sure, I guess. And then, then we'll clear it. I'm gonna go buy some cards, man. The Pokemon, the Pokemon card game, dude, is, is eating me up, man. just a little over on that guys that's all right we were a little over on the last one too so it's not like it matters too much what i've noticed with this nace and i always have a problem um laying the base down man like actually mixing it properly even though it says like you're eight to four which i would assume is you're two to one um i don't know man i just i just pissed me off Sometimes it doesn't want to lay very nice, and like right here, you kind of got to really get material in the air to get it down, for me at least. I know there's some people out there, man, that you guys are, you guys are really good at 
saving material, getting getting material on the panel and actually saving it. That's one thing that I've always like tried to work on, which has caused me to um, just cut back on my airflow all the time and, and basically just ruin me as far as a painter, I feel like. Because I can lay beautiful paint if I just wanted to put a, you know pressure behind it, but there's a certain point of you know laying beautiful paint, but but not wasting all that paint that's in the environment. Basically, you know what I mean. You want to put that paint that's on the panel. No. I'm a little upset about that. I knew I shouldn't have been so, uh, fucking heavy on it, man. I just want to put a third coat now right there. I, I can't. It's just going to drive me insane. Because I feel like if I don't, then I'm going to look back at it and be like, I should have put more paint right there. I would have had enough if I would have just chilled out and not been so heavy. I, I knew I was kind of like, it was kind of coming out a little too much right there. And I was like, oh, man, should I? And I was like, eh, it's all right. I got enough paint. And then, you know, run out. Uh, go figure. Go figure, dude. Every time you, Every time you think you're good, you're not. My base is kind of crunchy, which in turn is going to leave my fucking clear crunchy right here. Not so bad, but it's kind of orange feely, which sucks. That means we're going to have to lay our clear on there pretty good to lay it out. It's still probably going to look a little crunchy anyway. Let me grab that uh, cleaner real quick, let that dry a little bit. That sucks.
my. We're going to use the uh, Keystone Clear that we have, which is a little better clear. It's not going to dry tonight, then. Definitely going to dry, like, tomorrow or something. But, uh, it's better clear, at least. It's a lot more expensive, that's for sure. Um, but since we know our buddy here, definitely can't do him wrong, right? Give him some cheap clear, and, like, a year later his shit starts peeling. No. You could probably get away with cheap clear for a certain point. Um, I noticed on my buddy's car, we used, um, I think we used, you know what? We used a Transtar clear, actually, now that I think about it, I want to say, which is cheap shit, too. And it only lasted a couple years on a Corvette, but that's what the guy wanted to use, which um, we'll be doing that Corvette on stream, too, actually, guys. Get ready for that. It'll be a... Uh, SV7 Super Vet Corvette, I guess is what it's called. It's a, it's a certain body kit. It's like a wide body kit on a Corvette. It's pretty rad. My buddy, uh, my buddy ended up getting a guy to send him, and he does some of the stuff. All right, well, let's clear this shit. I'm wondering if we shouldn't just leave it at that. That's, that's a lot of fucking clear on there, man. Let's see how much we got left. I feel like we used a pretty good amount. Where are we at? Two to one. Where's my two to one? I don't feel like we used very much clear. I guess we could put another coat. If it was me, I mean, personally, that that was a pretty thick coat. Um, you could tell that the hardener's kind of being a bitch, or it's just that clear, just this always a fucking bitch to come out. But either way, um, that's one coat. So what I'd probably do is I'd let that sit, you know, 10 minutes, whatever. Some people would say until uh, you start to touch it and it gets stringy. Um, but I feel like this hardener is kind of not bad, but it's it's going bad. So I'm going to give it a little longer to dry and set, maybe, and then uh, finish it, possibly. Which, hopefully, the clear that's in the cup doesn't go bad, but I, I just don't want to put it... If I put it on too fast, this is the problem. If You, you could put your clear on, 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 but the problem is, is later on, it's going to want a solvent pop on you, possibly. That looks pretty good, though, where it makes me want to just um, get a little bit of clear with some, uh, some reducer. And it makes me just want to blend it in over there. And just leave it, because I almost wouldn't even buff these. They look pretty damn good. 
And in fact, I think that's what I might just do. But I, I got enough clear. That's what I say. I got enough clear, man. Then again, for my health, at least I'm not sitting in here all crazy, right? we're gonna do actually guys because that was a pretty thick coat of clear so what I did right now is I put a little 2k reducer in some uh, some clear I'm gonna look for my blend right here which I see go ahead and kind of coat it move back a little coat a little further it's good enough and what you could do if you want to even get more serious go back right after you've already cut just a little bit of clear with some uh, some 2k reducer you could go back you could empty it empty just a little bit more out of it so you got just about a teaspoon amount basically and you could throw in a little bit more reducer right so now your your 90 reducer probably 10% clear where before I feel like we were probably uh eh, maybe a 70 30 maybe a maybe a 60 40 I'd say we're more at like a man probably yeah, like a well, probably an 80 20 percent but we're gonna reduce this a little bit more and then we'll just go a little a little further and over what we just did barely a little further though not much and the only reason this is is because um This will burn in pretty good. We'll just leave it like that. So tomorrow what we'll do, once this dries, um, we'll go back and like we like I said before, we'll buff those out. Which, the reason why I put this, this uh, reducer twice like I just did, is because when we go to buff it, um, that reducer has already thinned that clear down enough that it's, it's almost not even going to be visible. You're going to have to feel it to really uh, to see it. You know what I mean? So, that's pretty much it right there, man. Give yourself 24 hours to let whatever paint you have cure before you buff it. If you um, if you bought some cheaper clear or you have a heat lamp, um, you can get away with, with buffing it today or, or whatever you would want. But in my opinion, um, you know, if you're doing this outside like us guys, you're just kind of doing a little, little side thingy for yourself or, or your, your family member or whoever it might be. Um, all you really, uh, all you really need to do is just let it sit 24 hours or at least till the next day. So like right now we just did that. So tomorrow morning at the same time, I'll come in, which I guess would be 24 hours. But even if I sprayed this real late at night, right? Like say I sprayed it like midnight, I'd probably, you know, let it dry and then wake up in the morning and, and buff it. But then again, my wake up in the morning is about noon. So it's still going to sit for about 12 hours before it dries, you know? I wouldn't suggest to do it um, with uh, some of the slower clears, especially if you're in your garage doing it. Just just let it dry, guys. If you if you're not worried about it, nobody needs it right away. You know, you're not doing insurance cars or anything, and you're just kind of doing your own thing. Man, let it sit a day, guys. Let it do its thing. You know what I mean? And uh, and come back the next day, and or two days later. You know, even my primer. When I do a complete car. I'll let my primer sit for a couple days. I don't uh, I don't just go right right to sanding and trying to do it. You know, we did one a truck in about three weeks, and uh, and we gave it a couple days to sit in the sun. I made sure that it, it sat in the sun because I felt like if we just did everything real quick, that you know we were just gonna have a shit of a time at the end of it. So.
So right now all I'm doing is we're just cleaning that gun out, guys. Just trying to make sure everything's clean, but I appreciate everybody, man, that comes in. Um, you know, like, follow, subscribe, anybody. If you guys are watching this right now, got this far with it. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate all the follows. Um, I appreciate the people that came in the other day in the stream and were uh, watching us open up some cards. That was pretty fun, man. So hopefully we can do it all again pretty soon, guys. And uh, once again, you already know, Transparent Fox HP. If you guys need anything, have any questions, issues, just contact me, guys. You got all the information, all right? You guys have a blessed day.